how long would it take you of learning how to code to become job ready. So we all know about Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule. The key to achieving true expertise in any skill is simply a matter of practicing for at least 10,000 hours. Now, as far as I'm aware, this idea doesn't have any scientific backing, but if we were to break down 10,000 hours over the course of a decade, that would be approximately a little less than three hours a day for 10 years. Without much research, it's pretty clear that doing anything for three hours a day for 10 years would make you pretty experienced. But how long does it take to learn a skill to be considered good enough to provide value and become compensated for said skill? If Malcolm Gladwell can make up his own 10,000 hour rule, I'm gonna make up my own rule and call it the thousand hour rule. Now here's the thing, a thousand hours obviously isn't concrete. It may be a little more, it may be a little less, it may be a lot less. It all just depends on your scenario. In the past, I've thrown out arbitrary timelines like six months for learning how to code. But honestly, I hate throwing around timelines like this because sure, you could probably learn how to code in six months. But if you're only doing it for five hours a week, there's just simply no way. Now, I want to break down these thousand hours and apply it to your learning journey as it relates to becoming a software developer. First things first, let's get timeline out of the way. Breaking down a thousand hours over the course of three hours a day or 21 hours a week would look like about one year of learning how to code. If you were to study as if it were your full-time job at 40 hours a week, it would take you about 25 weeks or six months, which is pretty close to how long a typical coding bootcamp lasts. The important thing is to identify your personal situation and adapt to a schedule that works for you. And also remember that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Maybe you have a family or you're already working a full-time job, in which case you may only be able to budget an hour to two hours at the end of the day to learning how to code. Or in my case, I was living in my parents' basement where I would sometimes code for 60 hours a week. However long you spend coding a day, just try not to burn yourself out. I know how easy it can be to get so motivated to make a schedule where you're coding 40 hours a week and then quickly disappoint yourself week over week when you're not hitting your goal and you end up giving up. So be realistic with your timeline and remember to take it easy. I get that a thousand hours can seem pretty intimidating on paper, but this could be one of the best thousand hour investment of your life. I like to think about all the time I wasted in my early 20s playing games like RuneScape, the thousands upon thousands of hours I wasted. Whereas if I were to spend only a fraction of that time learning a valuable skill, I could be much further <laughs> in my life and achieving my goals. Now the rest of this video, we're gonna break down exactly what to do with those thousand hours, which will be good for you to figure out how to spend your time. But I'd actually encourage you to not even think about it or track each hour of your time, as that may lead to you getting burnt out. So goal one learning how to code is sure, learning a valuable skill set and getting a job, but it's so important to enjoy yourself. Coding can be a really engaging pastime where you're not even thinking about how many hours you're putting in. So let's talk about what you should be doing with those thousand hours in order to become job ready or considered entry level. For the first hundred hours of your thousand hour time block, you've got to learn the fundamentals. After you've decided on what path you want to go down as a programmer, game development, mobile development, backend web, front end web, full stack, it's time to pick a language. Like I've said in the past, alongside many other programmers, it doesn't really matter the language you pick because the fundamentals end up transferring across all programming languages once you learn them. However, if you wanna hit the ground running from the get-go, pick a language that's popular in the job market. The most popular language is JavaScript just because of its versatility for front-end, back-end, and mobile applications. But another language, and one that I wish I would have started picking up on sooner, is Python, simply because of its shorter and simpler syntax, and because Python is extremely versatile. Now for the fundamentals. This includes variables, arrays, dictionaries, conditions, loops, functions, classes, objects, etc. It's impossible to explain the fundamentals in depth in a video like this, and there are people online who do a much better job at explaining this than myself. But this is where you should start looking for materials on your own online, such as free code camps, four hour learn Python full course for beginners. Or if you want something a little more in depth when it comes to learning fundamentals, you can check out the Python 3 fundamentals course on Udemy, who is the sponsor of today's video, to gain access to over 47 hours of video content 
going over all the fundamentals with Python. When learning the fundamentals, you'll pick up on the basics of object-oriented programming, but I'd take that a step further and find a resource specific to OOP. Like this book I'm currently reading titled The Object-Oriented Thought Process. Or even maybe another course on OOP, such as Python OOP, Object-Oriented Programming for Beginners, again, on Udemy. After you learn the fundamentals, the next step would be to learn some frameworks. This will be about your next 200 hours. Now, a framework is essentially a set of tools and modules that can be reused for various projects and speed up your development time. You may have heard of frameworks like React Native, which is a JavaScript framework for developing cross-platform applications, or Django, which is a Python-based framework for developing web applications. Both of these frameworks are highly utilized in the software development market, and depending on where you want to end up in your career, learning either of these would be a safe bet. I personally think one of the best ways to learn a framework when first starting out is by following along with tutorials where you're actually building projects. Following along with tutorials that built real world projects really helped me get a better idea of real world use cases versus just some random coding challenges. There's a ton of free resources out there on YouTube, but following along with the Python theme, if you want something that's more structured and web development oriented, you can check out the Django course called Python Django, the practical guide by one of my favorite teachers on Udemy, Maximilian Schwartzmuller. Once you get the fundamentals down, OOP down, you followed along with some tutorials, learned a framework or two, this is where the fun part starts. I think the best use of the last 700 hours would be to build your own personal projects. There's nothing more satisfying than coming up with your own project idea, coding that project, getting stuck, banging your head against the wall, reading documentation, using Stack Overflow, using Google, getting unstuck, and then watching that project come to life. When you don't have that crutch of a tutorial to hold you up, that's when you really start to learn. I always tell people that you don't need your own unique idea when building your own projects. Take something that's already out there, add your own twist on it, and start coding it. The goal of building your own project is to have a solid portfolio, a solid body of work, so you can take that into an interview to show them that you know what you're doing. Also, when building your own projects, make sure to learn Git. Git is the industry standard for source control, which essentially is a way to track, save, and manage changes in your software. I know that I've laid out this path to learning in a very linear fashion, but understand that the steps for learning aren't linear. Instead of thinking of your learning as a linear path, Think of it as more of a cycle. You may have to jump back to learning more of the fundamentals, even when you're building your own projects. Or maybe you don't need to spend as much time as learning the fundamentals. You can jump straight into building your own projects. Because the fact of the matter is, regardless of how much experience you get, you're always going to be learning in software development. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I'm doing over here on my channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.